Whether newly planted or 10 years old, the key to a successful riparian buffer is regular monitoring and maintenance. This video shares an overview of buffer maintenance activities and seasonal reminders, but of course does not cover all situations. One of the best things any landowner can do is to walk through the buffer at different times throughout the year. Bring along a notebook or a camera to help document any obvious changes or interesting things that you find on your visit. Capital RCD's Riparian Buffer Monitoring Guide is another tool that can help assess overall buffer quality, including stream health, wildlife presence, and even help identify invasive or noxious weeds. Whatever the format, taking notes and comparing results from season to season will help identify issues and document successful treatments as the buffer matures. To ensure maximum protection for young trees, the first activity each spring and the last every fall needs to be tree shelter maintenance. It's important to ensure that each tree shelter is upright, seated below grade, and that their stakes are in good condition and able to support the shelter through frost heave in the cold weather and heavy rain or flood events year-round. Start by lifting each shelter and remove any excess organic material and visually inspect for vole or pest damage. If you find damage, mark the tree for future inspection or possible replacement. Inspect the shelters, stakes, and ties for damage and replace if needed. And also, this is the time to remove any wasp nests or other debris that may prevent a tree's emergence from the tube. If the tree is already emerged, go ahead and remove any remaining bird netting. Next, reseat each shelter, ensuring that it's approximately two inches below ground, then resecure stakes or ties as needed. Many shelters will split open to accommodate a growing tree trunk and once open may be removed or kept on the tree as needed to help protect the bark from deer or other animals. Once a tree no longer needs the shelter, it can be removed, stored, or reused to protect volunteer or replacement trees, even if it's open on one side. During spring, owners can replace lost stock with either bare root or containerized replacement stock but should only use containerized trees when replanting in the fall. Consult your bare root supplier for specific site preparation or timing instructions, and be sure to install a tree shelter around each newly planted tree. If replanting isn't an option, then mark dead trees and make a list so that replacements can be ordered for the following season. Are there any young non-invasive volunteer trees nearby? You can reuse a shelter from dead stock to protect these new trees, as well as any newly planted containerized stock. Before summer arrives, have a plan in place to provide water for any newly planted trees that are in dry areas. Then continue to monitor their progress and water as needed to limit stress during early growth. Taking the time to properly maintain tree shelters will considerably reduce damage from voles and other pests especially when combined with appropriate weed control, such as applying a broad spectrum herbicide in three foot strips following tree planting lines or around individual trees. This type of herbicide application will also help keep competing vegetation to a minimum. Spot spraying is another common technique used to keep noxious and evasive weeds under control during the spring and summer, but is most effective during the fall when plants like Canada thistle start sending remaining energy to their roots. In addition to spot spraying, using a cut stump method will help eliminate woody invasive and noxious weeds like autumn olive, oriental bittersweet, and others. Select appropriate herbicides based on site conditions or specific weeds, and contact county NRCS, FSA, county foresters, or extension staff for assistance in identifying appropriate herbicides if needed. When using herbicides, be sure to follow all label instructions as well as use appropriate application and safety equipment. As the buffer matures, maintenance activities will still include invasive plant control, but will also start to include more tree health procedures such as pruning or specific pest management, 
for example, fall webworm or tent caterpillars. Yet be sure to keep downed limbs or trees that are not impeding the growth of neighboring trees to provide habitat for native wildlife and nutrients for surrounding soil. Also, it's important to monitor mature buffers after floods to see how well they withstood not only the water levels and flow rates, but also to clear any organic or inorganic debris like leaves, branches, plastic, wire, etc. that may have been deposited by flood water to prevent rotting or pest habitat around shrubs and tree bases. To review, buffer owners should walk through their buffer acreage and conduct maintenance activities regularly. In winter, owners can take advantage of the lack of leaves to inspect trees and shrubs for broken limbs, bark injury, and pest damage. As temperatures warm, inspect tree shelters, replace damage or rotten stakes, and be sure that each is reseeded below grade before securing appropriately. Plant bare root or containerized replacement stock and be prepared to provide water as needed. Also, apply herbicide as needed to reduce weed pressure and pest habitat. Continue monitoring the buffer throughout the summer to identify issues while they're still easily managed, especially downed shelters or trees and management of noxious or invasive weeds. As autumn arrives, remove woody invasive and noxious weeds using appropriate herbicide application techniques. Plant containerized replacement stock, identify volunteer trees in the buffer, mark dead trees, and create a list of needed replacement stock. Finally, inspect each tree shelter again, taking care to add shelters to volunteer trees and to newly planted stock. Landowners with riparian buffers enrolled in the Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program should review requirements established in their conservation plan and contact their county USDA NRCS or USDA FSA office with questions. For additional information about riparian buffer monitoring and maintenance activities, including a list of helpful resources, agencies, and organizations, visit capitalrcd.org. Thank you.